Hello, welcome back to Sextra. Where we talk about sex and all the extras. I'm Honey. And I'm Maria. And this week we are in our brand new studio. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> um, We've got this cute green sofa. We got it for free. All our postcards, our so sexual cute. and sex and relationships and Honey and, and Maria themed. <laughs> Those cards, um, our little table. Yeah. We're really proud of it, okay, guys? This is yeah. very DIY, and this is the shed in the back of my house. Yeah. But I think it's really cute, and I'm really proud of us, and it's really exciting. So, welcome to the studio. Yeah. <laughs> and today, we're just going to record a little catch up with us. It was going to be catch up with us for the summer, <laughs> but it is now two like days season. till November. <laughs> so, yeah. It's not summer, it's catch up with us since season one. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're just going to get into it. We have quite a lot to catch you guys up on in the sex, relationship, friendship, mental health realm of things. And this is just going to be like a little teaser for season two. We're yeah, happy. so make sure you tune the fuck in. Yeah. And we're so happy to be recording again because for the last like however many months five months or something we've been just doing all the like boring admin stuff yeah. the podcast so it's been really grueling and we're we were like ugh, i don't know i don't know if this was what you were like but i was getting to the stage where i was like fuck this fucking podcast i just want to start <laughs> recording again yeah it's no. so boring why do we even do it and i was like okay because we actually enjoy recording <laughs> so yeah here we are and we can finally record together it's all coming together guys yeah. okay we're really stepping up in the world. We just need a sponsor now, so <laughs> if anyone wants to sponsor us. Yeah, look at our professional space now. We're sponsor the fuck out of us, please. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let's get into it. So, Maria, what, what have you been up to? Tell us about your summer. Tell us about your current relationship vibes, thoughts, <laughs> what's going on. Okay, well, my summer was great. I went to Mexico, spent the summer there. It was really good. Amazing good times. <laughs> Amazing good times. Yes. In terms of my relationship, I guess where I last left you guys, you know, I lived in Bristol. My boyfriend lived in Bristol. We saw each other literally every night. I was about to graduate. He still has a year. And now I've graduated. And I don't live in Bristol no more. Oh, no. <laughs> and my boyfriend's meant to still be in Bristol, but he he isn't there right now. He doesn't he doesn't have a place to live, so he's in Paris he's right now. Blessed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've embarked on this long distance, not living in the same city, not really living in the same country at the moment vibes. So that's happened. We're currently short long distance. <laughs> <laughs> Which I was very, very afraid of and very scared about. And a lot of anxiety was ha has been had <laughs> about this whole arrangement. But it's actually been a lot better than I thought. So I guess that's my update. I am now in a short, long distance relationship. <laughs> and I don't hate it as much as I thought I would. I've actually been enjoying it. I like this sort of idea of, you know having a little bit more time to just like have my own shit going on and mm. his uh, he's really busy and all of that and I feel like I don't know it can only it will be good like we're, we've got this I feel like it's forced us to have a lot of conversations that have been like a lot more productive than any other sort of like conflict conversations we've had in our relationship mm. because we just kind of have to figure it out yeah it's like um, more adult shit exactly so it's good. Like I feel really good about it, and I'm really happy. In progress. My relationship. Yeah. Wow, that is true progress, Fee. <laughs> I'm proud of you. No, truly. And yeah, I went to Paris like last week, and I'm really into Paris. Might move there, you know. Um, Abandon me. <laughs> I mean, I I feel like it's, I'm not announcing anything. It's just a maybe. There's a lot of maybe. There's like another update. I guess there's. I'm just in a in a time of maybe it's like there's just all this like potential stuff that I want to do and then there's like a lot of a lot of like maybes as I just said yeah. <laughs> of like stuff that might happen and stuff that I might want to do yeah stuff that I might not you know yeah but I feel but... like that was just natural because it's like we just graduated and... exactly 
neither of us did degrees that we particularly want to pursue <laughs> so yeah it's a it's a time of limbo or whatever but it's all right i'm i'm feeling okay about it like i've i obviously do have times that i feel really not okay about it and like really negative and really like scared and it's just not good vibes of course but i feel like mostly i have like quite a positive outlook mm. i'm thinking yeah what what do you think what are what sorry mm. what, what are do your... i think about your life <laughs> no. i'm so happy for you <laughs> no i mean as in how are you feeling about Post-grad graduating life. yeah mm. i'm feeling like pretty neutral about it to be fair i spent most of the summer doing nothing so i kind of wish that i would have gone away or like now i feel like i'm ready after the whole covid I mean, not after, that we're still very much in the thick of it. But I feel like at this point, I'm kind of just like, I do want to go away somewhere. And I've been in the UK for way too long, like two years at this point. So I've had enough. Um, And I have a job, a full-time job. So that's kind of keeping me busy, I guess, or somewhat. I have to be somewhere every day at least. So yeah, shout out to my boss if you're listening to this podcast. <laughs> Apparently he's like really into it. He always asks me questions about it. Yeah, so it's good. It's uh, it's good to make some money and just be productive in some ways at least. And I'm looking forward to like, because it's only for six months. So I'm kind of looking forward to being able to travel. I'm going to go to yeah. America because they finally lifted the travel ban after yeah. I went through a whole breakup because of it. <laughs> so that's great. Long. But it's fine i'm over it um, and we can do the podcast and i feel like that's good because it gives us something that we have to think about and yeah. it gives us a purpose i think so yeah i'm feeling pretty good about it and then i did have like a bit of a shit summer to be honest because i was like we obviously hyped up hot girl summer so much i mean <laughs> everyone did because it was like lockdown was ending blah 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 but yeah I just was like everyone's away and I don't have any friends like if you're busy or like another one of our friends is busy I just don't really have anything to do and I envisaged me going out and like doing stuff by myself in summer making friends but it was yeah it was still quite covidy in the UK so I didn't really want to be getting on like tubes to go to the other side of London which is where I wanted to go I wanted to go like explore different parts of London Mm -hmm. so yeah and I I went to visit my friend in Swansea so that was quite nice um and we spent quite a lot of time together so yeah it was it was good we had good times but also the times in between were quite boring and I was like I need new friends I need to have something to do other than the podcast because like there's only so much you can read about STIs and (laughs) not go insane (laughs) yeah well I guess you also had a bit of a spanner thrown in the works before summer do you want to yeah speaking of STIs (laughs) do you want to yeah so if you guys follow us on Instagram you probably saw my celebrity announcement (laughs) video that I've made confessing that I have genital herpes and I found this out in like May this year and it was kind of shit obviously because I was very much in the middle of getting through my breakup and I was like kind of at the stage where I could consider having sex with someone again and I hadn't had sex in a very long time Mm. by this point and it was just like quite a shock to find this out yeah so that was shit for a while like a good month or so I really freaked out about it and I didn't really know what it meant I think especially because I like obviously we have this podcast and we like brand ourselves as like sex positive and we know all this stuff about sex and I didn't know anything about herpes Mm. and I didn't know how to deal with it and I felt like I had to just like pretend that everything was okay but actually I was like really not okay I was really having a rough time so yeah and I just wasn't like ready to talk about it before then so yeah and then eventually I kind of got over it I read as much as I could about it and like once I felt like I was in a good place with knowing enough about it I could consider going on dates again and having sex again so yeah and then I slept with one of my old flatmates (laughs) so that was a good idea (laughs) although it didn't really matter to be fair but it was one of those things where I felt like we only had sex because it was like we weren't gonna see each other again (laughs) like we haven't spoken since which is fine but I would have rather just stayed friends than have sex and like I don't know but it's not really a big deal it's not weird or anything and 
Then I went on a Tinder date. I literally had, after not having sex for like nine months, I had sex twice in a week. And I didn't have sex for like three <laughs> months after that. <laughs> I think I kind of was like, I need to prove to myself that I can have sex again and that I'm like not yeah. just like ruined by this having herpes, which I obviously wasn't, but at that stage it felt like that. Yeah. And then, yeah, I did it. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not really that bothered anymore. <laughs> it was just too much effort. So Now I have the proof. Yeah. <laughs> I can do it. No, but I was thinking also, like, surely you just kind of had to process the whole thing and, like, mm. I don't know, like, fully understand what was going on, fully get the hang of it and, like, come to terms with it and then be like, okay, how how am I going to go about this, like, yeah. going forward or whatever? Yeah, because well, obviously that's... it was, like... Mm enough for me to know i have it myself but then i didn't want to have to think about like potentially giving it to someone yeah. else and that like that i think that would have just really messed me up if i had to think about that during mm. that time and yeah i just was getting over the stress of everything we've been through <laughs> in the last yeah. year like graduating my breakup finding out i have herpes <laughs> and just working so fucking much for so long so yeah i was just chilling really even though i can't tell you a single thing that i did in those days when i was chilling but yeah it's all good (laughs) (laughs) and now that you're a you're a working girl you've been you've been dating yeah i've been on a few dates so the date that i went on in like june that was a tinder date and it went really well actually the guy was really good at sex <laughs> at licking <laughs> yeah at licking <laughs> and he was very lovely and i obviously i have to disclose to people mm. that i have herpes we are going to do a whole episode on it so keep your eyes out for that if you want to know a bit more about like the technical just like more details about it in general yeah. we'll talk about it then but yeah so i was like if i'm going to disclose to people i'm going to at least do it confidently so mm. to the first guy i had sex with i literally just said wait I have herpes like while we were making out and he was like okay I don't care and then this the next guy I told him while we were on the date and he was like yeah that's fine he knew a bit about it and it was actually really hot for people to just be like yeah I know like about this and Mm. like ask questions and be interested in having these conversations yeah rather than it being a weird dynamic because I feel like people I've slept with in the past it's like we both know we're sleeping with other people but no one really talks about it yeah so it's like a weird like uh, have you been tested are you being safe blah 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 Mm. but whereas now I have to be like oh I have herpes and then they'll probably say oh yeah that's fine I got tested for this or you know like oh what does this mean Mm. are we going to use a condom yeah we're going to use a condom otherwise you're probably going to get herpes so (laughs) yeah and then we also said well like I can let you keep speaking but how it also in a way like weeds out the kind of people that you actually want to be dating because it's like people that are educated or like you know, aren't going to be weird about it. And it's like, yeah, obviously, like, that kind of weeds out a whole yeah. fucking cohort of people that are a just... Load of people. That you wouldn't want to date anyway. Yeah, exactly. And, like, even people that I slept with before, I was like, should I just have sex with them when I get back to London for the convenience of it? Mm. Because, like, I know that I can and because I'm horny. But then I was like, <laughs> is it worth being, like, shamed for having yeah. herpes when I've already been shaming myself for, like, the last <laughs> month or two? Yeah. So I really don't need someone else to do that for me. And then it was mm-hmm. like, yeah, well, why am I even sleeping with this person in the first place if they can't just, like, respect me for who I am? So, yeah. Yeah, so it's been quite good at that. And then, yeah, I didn't have sex for ages and ages and ages. And then I finally got Hinge and I've been using Hinge. I quite like it. Again, we're going to do a whole episode on dating apps. So I have a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, then I went on a date with this lovely person and it was really nice. It was, like, really refreshing because they're queer and I hadn't dated someone who was queer for, like, a really long time. And it kind of, like, reminded me that I'm queer as well. <laughs> and yeah it was just like really nice to not have to explain everything to someone especially because like no offense to my ex but like they're very straight and very cis and they're a man and like having to explain to him that things are the way they are and like women like you know just like (laughs) what women have to put up with it's just like emotionally exhausting but with this person it's just like it was nice to just it was so easy and yeah again disclosed we had a whole conversation about it 
And I was also surprised we were saying before I went on that date, like, surely I'm not going to have sex because I was also on my period. And I was like, it's yeah, just Yeah, it was a like lot. a brunch date. I yeah. was like, oh, hon, like, don't worry about it. Like, it doesn't sound like a sex kind of vibes. And then literally, like, honey spent the entire day with this person. Like, I thought that I texted you being like, oh, how did it go? Like a couple hours after after the thing being yeah. like, oh, surely it'll be done by now. And nah. No, nah, we there was like another together. 10 hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was interesting. And then I also went on another date this week. And yeah, I feel like it's just been good to go on dates, meet people, remind myself that I do actually know how to socialize with people <laughs> and I'm quite good at it. <laughs> yeah, and just have like interactions with people that don't necessarily have to be sexual. Also, I, I've now firmly reminded myself that I do not want to be in a relationship even though this isn't a surprise to literally anyone but it's just nice to know that I can go on dates with several people and like obviously I I, I know I have herpes but like I have to go to a sexual health professional quite often anyway just to like talk about general stuff so I know that I'm being safe and mm. yeah it's, it's it's going well I think and honestly I'm so surprised like if you had told me when I found out I had herpes that this was going to be the position that I'm in now and like I would feel so positively about it even though obviously I still have days like when I'm having outbreaks that I'm like fuck this shit it really really hurts yeah um I feel like overall it's genuinely really really helped with just like my overall outlook on sex and dating oh. and because I have to communicate about that yeah. specifically I have to communicate about other things as well or like I just feel a lot more at ease because if they're going to be nice about that they're not going to like judge me for wanting to be licked or whatever the fuck it is <laughs> I want to say so yeah it's just been quite good and yeah I'm quite proud of myself <laughs> I'm really proud of you yeah yeah thanks for sure well done for getting herpes, honey. Thanks so much. I really, really tried. <laughs> yeah, that was also the thing as well, is because, like, I just remember this specific moment when I was having sex, and I was like, that looks like herpes, and I just didn't. But it was when I was in a relationship, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I just didn't. Obviously, I, I was like, no, it's probably yeah, not, yeah, yeah, surely. Yeah. And then, yeah, and obviously now we both have herpes, so... I was right and also because I didn't know how to deal with it it was just like a whole mm. load of things that I was like I was angry at myself that I didn't know how to deal with it all this stuff anyway we'll get into it later I'm sure it will be like a very much ongoing theme in this season <laughs> so don't worry you'll get all the happiest <laughs> content you need in your life <laughs> lucky us so lucky i know <laughs> we were joking the other day that our group chat should be called <laughs> honey's vagina chat because i just <laughs> send everyone too much information about my bodily <laughs> functions at all hours of the day <laughs> yeah what else what else has been going on other than herpes other than herpes other than your short long distance relationship <laughs> what have we actually you know how at the start of in of the year we kind of talked about like what kind of sex goals we oh, have yeah. and like yeah, relationship yeah. goals and all of that shit well i've actually fulfilled most of mine just have one missing nice. the threesome that's still outstanding so if anyone <laughs> again if anyone wants to volunteer my dms are open <laughs> Um, <laughs> don't send them to the sex DMs. <laughs> I don't want to see that <laughs> yeah so threesome still outstanding but everything else has been completed so I had nice. sex outside nice. I had sex in public I guess it's the same it's the yeah. same time but you know yeah. two birds one stone very nice and I I lost my anal virginity it's happened wow yeah. Finally. So grown up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's it's quite exciting. I mean, like, did I love it? No. But Am I surprised? No. <laughs> <laughs> like, realistically, it does kind of just feel like you're shitting yourself. Yeah. And it hurt a lot, to be honest. But we did we used a condom, you know, so because you're not meant to put if you like penetrate the ass, like you shouldn't put it back into the vagina, you know, because of yeah. the the bacteria or whatever so we got we used a condom so we could you know like easily dispose of the mess and it was because it's messy and stuff you know just spitting out some tips guys (laughs) (laughs) 
and we did it in like spooning positions because because I, I heard that it's like a lot better for your first time because you're more in control than like I feel like being on all fours is quite a vulnerable position so yeah I wanted to avoid my asshole just being out like that yeah you know? but yeah I don't know it's just uh, not my cup of tea but we have been like doing more butt stuff and things like that too you know, exploring more, which is quite exciting. Oh my God, you're so you adventurous. Know, <laughs> I know. But it's all good things, you know, and uh, and trying more shit, being more, like, again, communicative. I guess kind of my, one of my new goals is now, like, rather than actual practical, not practical, then, like, rather than something you, know, you can actually point to, like, have sex outside or, like, do anal or whatever, I guess now it's switched to more, like, be more, like, actually in, like, in the moment of like enjoying sex rather than being like oh like do I look good or like Mm. is this good for him or you know be more like how does this feel for me so that's where I'm at at the moment (laughs) but yeah sex goals completed and new ones have been added very very nice yeah and I guess you've kind of completed your goals as well you said be more communicative yeah Yeah. also I remembered I really had to talk about this (laughs) I've been using this. This isn't like sponsored in any way, but if they want to sponsor us, please. Like, I'm genuinely begging you. I'm obsessed with this. Um, so I'm using this app called Karma, K A M A. That's like a masturbation meditation app, and it works on like breath work and like squeezing your pelvic floor muscles. They have ones for people with vulvas and with penises, so you can choose, and. It also has like tips for masturbation and stuff, and it's really good. I also like, in case I haven't talked about this, which I probably have, I'm like obviously really into yoga and stuff, so it's kind of <laughs> like that, but it's like erotic and it's really nice. And I did this on my date with this person that I went on the date with on Hinge, and it was so hot. We were talking about it the other day because I saw them again, and we were like, that was like really hot and also like really weird to do on a first date, <laughs> but it was just so nice. And yeah, you guys should go check that out because genuinely, I feel like it really helps with what you're saying of trying to be in the moment mm. and get out of your head because you're just focusing on your body and your breath. And obviously, if you do it by yourself, like masturbating is kind of easy to transfer it into having sex with a partner and it's just good to have like bodily awareness in general I feel like yeah. doing yoga has really helped me with that I know that you really don't want to do it so I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole again <laughs> but doing yoga and then this as well it has just been so nice because I also used to just like be really in my head and now I feel like I just don't really care and I was thinking how did I just stop that and th- I think this is how okay so, okay I'll try it I'll give it a try I have been saying that I'll try it, but I genuinely will we actually work really hard on this podcast like so much work has gone on even though we've been on a season break I feel like we've done so much over the summer mm-hmm. of like we've really been trying to post loads on Instagram and like get the Instagram going even though we literally haven't gained any followers so if you're a new listener or maybe you're watching on YouTube or anything please go follow us on Instagram at Sextras Podcast, Facebook Sextras Podcast, go to our website www.sextraspodcast.com because we have all the episodes there, we have all the artwork, like everything is just all in one place and you can find the episodes by category if you want to as information you can contact us you can send your anonymous confessions for the season that's coming up (laughs) and dm us if you want to you can ask me questions about herpes if anyone's going through the same thing i would be very very happy to help you because i've been there and i know it was shit and i don't want anyone else to go through (laughs) it uh yeah and any other questions you have for us yeah and stay tuned definitely go follow us on instagram and stay tuned there because we're gonna start asking and like recruiting all your stories Mm. and all your answers to all the shit for the sorry all the stuff (laughs) for the segments for the new season so like definitely go check out check us out there and keep updated like we'll keep you updated there yeah should we maybe say a little teaser of some of the episodes that we have coming up Mm -hmm. so we're obviously going to do the ones about stis and dating apps so we're looking for stories if that you have about dating apps or stis whatever you want we're going to do one about body confidence during sex and we're going to do 
what else we attachment do? theory attachment theory yeah we're gonna um, do some more like lgbt like how to be a good ally mm. and also like talking to sort of more of the lgbt like all the letters in the yeah in the thingy you know yes, get a bit anyone... more diversity and representation yes and if anyone has like an interesting story or just like wants to talk about being queer in any way obviously feel free to volunteer yourself as a guest on our yeah. podcast we are always looking for people now is the time to reach out guys you know start sending us all your shit so we can start getting all getting it all together for the new season you want to hear about just let us know as well on all those platforms and don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on apple mm-hmm. Podcasts. go catch up with all of season one there are 54 episodes and yeah we'll see you very very soon bye, bye. <laughs> you've been listening to sextras presented by honey jane wyatt and maria jose hayo produced by mabel productions Thanks.